great. Okay, so we're almost there. So I'll create a variable here called uh, native, actually I'll just call it n, n process. And you know what? It'd probably be it'd probably be smarter if I created this variable up here with the rest of them here. So I'll go private variable n process equals new. Ooh. It's ugly. I need to type that. Native process equals new native pro you know what? Here, here's what we'll do. We'll just do it exactly like we've done the other ones. Um, so we'll create our native process there, and here's what we're, we'll, where we will say in process equals new native process. Great. So, we need to uh, add an event listener to that native process. I forgot to include the capital. There we go. Um, and the type is going to be a, cr a progress event because we want to be able to uh, dynamically feed the, the bit array into um, Flash, so we need something that's kind of um, executing all the time. So we'll do a progress event here. There it is, and it will be standard output data. Great. And then I'm just going to say on output data. And then we're going to start that process. <coughs> Dot start. Oh, and it looks like it needs, ah, yes, it needs the native process startup info. So we'll put that in. Native process startup info, perfect. Great. So that's all it is for this function. Uh, the next thing we need to do is actually handle this event here. So we'll say private function and then I'm just going to select that and copy it, paste it in there. This has to handle events, so I'll say event, and this is a progress event. Great, and it looks like I lost my there. Okay, that's fine. I'll say void. Great. So, so we need to create a bit array now. So I'll just call that video stream, um, and data type that is a bit array. There we go, and we'll say equals new bit array. Um, so now we need to um, we need to feed that information from our native process now into our into our bit array. So we're going to say n process dot standard output dot read bits. Oops. Big bits in that. Let me just take a look at that. Bits, yeah. That takes, let's see, the bit array the offset and the length. Okay. So the bits is going to be the video, bit array, excuse me, is going to be the video stream. Um, I'll just say zero for this. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'm going to say native process dot standard output. Um, dot bytes available. There it is. Great. Okay. Now we're gonna say uh, end, uh, the network stream, and we're gonna append the bytes here, and we're gonna use our video stream for that. Whoops. Okay. So now there's a heap more event listeners that you sh probably should be adding to this native process to handle different kinds of errors and everything. Uh, but like I said before, this is the bare minimum that we need to make this work. So this class is actually done. This will probably, hopefully, if we cross our fingers, this should probably work. So let's set it up over here um, and get this going. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually add some uh, Swift data to this just so we have a nice size. I'm going to say Swift and then uh, I'm just going to set a width and height here. So I'll say width equals, we'll set it to 720. And the height equals, mm, strange. Uh, oops. We're going to set that to, just set that to 480. So we have a nice, uh, nice size video player there. Okay. So the first thing we need to do, we need to create 
uh, a path that we can feed into this thing that uh, is the path to our executable file, our FFmpeg file. So let's just go ahead and pretend that we're on Windows here for a second. And we'll say FFmpeg underscore path. And we'll make that a string. And we'll say equals. Now, if we were on Windows, it would probably be something like this. Like, if you wanted to make it easy on yourself, you might move the ffmpeg.exe to a folder on the C drive called ffmpeg. Within that folder, you might have a folder called bin. Inside that folder, you would have ffmpeg.exe. Okay? So that's how you'd, you'd get that, that to work. Just make sure that you put it somewhere simple like this so that you don't have to type a, a huge um, URL here. In my case, ffmpeg on Linux gets stall, installed... Um, from the root directory into a folder called uh, user, I think, and then it's in bin, and then ffmpeg, I think. So we'll see if that works. Um, the next thing we need is a path, again, to the video we want to play. So we'll create another path here called uh, video underscore path, and we'll make that a string as well. And you know what? I didn't capitalize the other one, so I'm not going to capitalize this one. And we'll make that equal to. So, and on my computer, uh, I have a folder here called videos in my home directory, and I have four different kinds of videos MOV file, a AVI file, an OGV file, and an MKV file. So, I have a few different versions here that I wanted to test out. So, the first one I'll do, I'll just uh, set up the link to that. It would be home, then Cameron, and then videos and then the first one is big buck bunny dot mov perfect okay so that's the that's the file we want to play so if you're on windows again it's you know wherever you put it i suppose <coughs> great uh, so the next thing we need to create is the actual video region that we want the video to play in so we'll call this video data type it as a video instantiate it as a new video. There we go. And then we need to create uh, we need to create a file now because all we've done with the ffmpeg underscore path is created the path to the file. We actually have to uh, make it uh, a, a real file within action, uh, sorry, within air um, in order to get this to actually work. So I'm going to create a variable called file. Data type it as a file. And uh, for now, I'll just I'll just say it's file.application directory. This is sort of how I always create a file if I don't know where the, where the file is going to be coming from. But uh, so we'll do that, and then we'll say last thing we need to do is um, we need to create a variable for the class that we have created here called play any video. So at this point, I think I'll just call it like uh, let's call it like ffmpeg. Data type that as play any video, um, and then I'll say equals new, play any video. Great. So now we've actually brought in that class that we created earlier. Awesome. So this, uh, I'm sort of creating all these in the wrong spot. I'm going to go ahead and cut all these from here. I don't know why I decided to to write those in the constructor method, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually put them outside of the constructor method because in the constructor, I want to get this whole thing rolling here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the video to the to the stage so that we can um, so that we can see it, obviously. So I'll say add child video. 